this message is to all the sisters all over the world. This message is to women to women, learning, learning our place, how, how our Heavenly Father created us, and learning everything that has to do regarding women. I think that in this last generation, we have lost many, many things. We have to go back to remembrance. We have to go back to the truth. And we have to make sure that to walk in that truth and everything that we have thought to be true, that we find out that it's not true, we want to remove that and apply the truth in our life. And so this message, I'm going to start. Uh, first, I want to start with a prayer. And then I'm going to start, sisters, reading a message that I think is so important that many of us learn it, understand it, and share it forward with other, with other sisters so they too may learn and, may, and they too may grow and apply this truth in their life. Dear Heavenly Father, Yahweh, I come to your presence in the name of Jehusha HaMashiach. May you guide me, Father. May this message reach all the women that you touch, that they may learn and grow your ways. And may they learn, Father, to apply your truth in their lives. In the mighty name of Jehusha HaMashiach, I pray. Amen. So let's dive in, sisters, in Messiah, Jehusha HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Let's learn and let's grow. And 1 Timothy 2.11, this is what it says. And I want to clarify something because I think that this has been misunderstood. And it needs to be clarified, something that has been brought to my attention that I am learning and growing and applying in my life presently and as i am learning and growing i want to share it forward so you too sister may also grow may also learn and first timothy chapter 2 verse 11 it says let a woman let a woman learn let a woman learn in silence with all submission and i do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man but to be in silence for adam was formed first then eve and adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived fell into transgression nevertheless she will be saved and shall bear in if they continue in faith love and holiness with self-control so we see here in this verse that a woman is to be is to learn in silence with all submission and also that a woman is not permitted to teach or to have authority over a man when it's talking having authority over a man we're talking a male person i know sometimes People, when they say man, they're thinking overall woman and man. This verse is literally specifically saying that as a woman, we are not allowed to, to uh, teach or, or, or to have authority over a man. And we must learn what this is because in this last generation, sisters, let's face it we have not been doing what we're supposed to be doing. And we must make correction. We must learn the truth, our purpose, what we were created for. A woman can serve and bless the body of Messiah in many wonderful ways, but teaching and leading men is not to be one of them. This was not, and is not our role. In the same way, a man was not created to bear and nurse children. A woman was not created to lead or to teach men. 
sisters all over the world, we were not created to teach and to lead men. We were created to be a helper. Remember, Adam was created first. And then Eve was created second. She was created to be a helper. We must know our place as a woman, what we were created for. It is so important in the body of Messiah that everyone is functioning in the role that they were created for. Remember that from the beginning of creation, Yahweh appointed the man to be in leadership position. The man has the role of guiding the spiritual direction of the family and the assembly. When a woman asks a question, she is taking it upon herself to guide the assembly. With her question, the direction of the assembly from that point will center around her question rather than the assembly being directed by those whom Yahweh himself appointed to lead the men. So you see, sisters, that we must learn in silence with all submission. We must not teach or have authority over a man. You see, we must not lead our place is to be a helper. And so many wonderful other things that the Father has given us. But I want to focus on this main thing because I want to get to something very important. But I want to make sure that I, I start with this beginning part of understanding the importance of the role of a woman understanding that we were created we were created to be a helpmate we were not created to lead and to teach a man we as women we can teach each other women we can teach each other and we can teach our children but we are not permitted to teach a man for man was created to be a teacher and a leader their position and their role is so important and so valuable that they must take that step. They have to take their place. And we as women, sisters and Messiah, we must take our place as the help meet. You see, we cannot be teaching man and we should not be leading man for that is not our place. We were not created to lead. We were not created to teach a man because that is a man's position. Man was created to lead. Man was created to teach. This is the reason why it says women must be silenced because that is not our place for us to, if we are in church for say, or in assembly or, or anywhere and we are asking questions to a man when we were not, when nobody asked us to, you know, we just came and we decided to, you know, we just, we're asking a question, you know, because remember, we're living in a society in a, in a generation where there is too, there is liberty in a sense of women's liberty and all that kind of stuff. We must remember and acquire truth of our place as a woman. When we understand the value of this message, when we under, truly understand the place and the position of a woman, and we truly start to take that position, we will truly start to fulfill our true role of what we were created for, you see. Now that I have put that in place, because I mean, that particular message, I can go deeper with that. But I wanted to get to a message in particular, but I wanted to express that in the beginning of what I really want to talk about. But I want all of you, all of you ladies, 
all over the world that are listening to this message, the importance of our place, bringing back the truth, bringing back the truth. Now, I would like to share with you ladies something so important. Why age 20 is the minimum age for marriage? I think this is important to build something, to understand our place and everything. It's so important that we, as women, teach each other and teach the younger, younger ladies that are growing up how to walk, how to walk in the ways that our Heavenly Father created us for. So they don't make the mistake that many of us have made, but they learn submission, that they learn to be that woman, how the Father created us to be, you see. Why age 20 is the minimal age for marriage? This is something, once you start listening to this message, you will see what I mean, sisters. Why the age 20 is the minimal age of being married. Think of it like the age 20 is the actual adult time frame. You know how right now in this generation, they have it as once you're 18, you're considered an adult. Well, that's not biblical. And we must dive into the truth. Remember, we are called to be separated from the world, sisters. And so we must understand as much as we can and applying the truth in our life. Now, listen to this, and I'm going to be reading a lot, sisters, so bear with me and try to learn as much as you can. Many people today are getting married too young, while well, some believe that in Bible times, the menstrual cycle, meaning the period, the menstrual cycle determines the age for marriage. Scripture actually teaches that one is not eligible for marriage until age 20. Are you hearing this? Until age 20. Let's first examine the Hebrew word taph, T-A-P-H. So if you go to biblehub.com and you um, just spell out taph, you will see the definition. But listen to the definition, the Hebrew word taph which is typically translated little ones, little ones. It doesn't actually mean little ones like that, but that's how it is often translated. So you'll see that it translated little ones, but it doesn't break it down. It doesn't break it down to which little ones are we talking about? Toddlers, babies, you know, what little ones? This is, this is a surprising moment here. Because you're, when you're hearing little ones, you're really thinking about, you know, little children. Now, listen to this. In Numbers 14, verse 31, it says, But your little ones, again, Taf, But your little ones, whom you said would be victims, I will bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. Remember, the Israelites during that time when they were, you know, when they were being taught the ways of the Father and things like that. There was a moment they rebelled, things like that. And then, short story, um, all the adults were not able to enter into the promised land, only the little ones. So listen to this, but listen to what was categorized as adults. So how old was a person in the Hebrew language called Taf? Let's figure that out. Numbers 14, verse 29, look at what it says. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness, all of your entire number from 20 years old and above. You're hearing this? from 20 years old and above. Listen to what it says in Deuteronomy 139. Moreover, your little ones, look into what is now is expressed in the little ones. Because first in Numbers 14, 21, the one that I just read you previously, 
it was talking about the ones that were not going to enter and they were numbered by from 20 years old and over they were not going to enter into the place but listen to regarding the little ones more over your little ones and your children who you say will be victims who today have no knowledge of good and evil they shall go in there to them i will give it and they shall possess it so according to this scripture those who are ta little ones are those who have not yet developed proper knowledge of good and evil are you hearing this sisters listen it's amazing numbers 14 29 is is clearly stating who are the adults here the ones that are not going in from 20 years old and over and then listen when it's expressing the little ones anyone that's under 20 anyone that's below that number below that number they are considered little ones. Why? Listen to this. Who today have no knowledge of good and evil. They shall go in there. To them I will give it and they shall possess it. So according to this scripture, those who are ta, little ones, are those who have not yet developed proper knowledge of good and evil. They have not developed proper, proper knowledge of good and evil. For this reason, they lack the proper knowledge to enter into such a serious covenant as the covenant of marriage and then lead a family. Remember what's the title? Why age 20 is the minimum age for marriage. So we are seeing as we go through the scripture that for this reason, they lack the proper knowledge to enter into such a serious covenant as the covenant of marriage and then lead a family. Someone below the age, you know, someone in their teens and under, they, they lack the proper knowledge, okay, to be able to, to enter into such a serious covenant like a marriage and to lead a family, you see? This is so important to understand because in this society right now, presently that we live, we see, we see basically children getting married at such of a young age, thinking that they are already an adult because that's how they, you know, um, the laws in some places have it, that by the age of 18, you are considered already an adult. But in the scripture, it's not like that, okay? A person in that age group, is considered still a child, a taf. That's why in the Deuteronomy we see that a child around that age where they entered in, but anyone that was over 20 years old was considered an adult. Now, sisters, let's continue. Listen to this. Only a person 20 years or older would have been counted as separated families. Such persons were also at the age for war. Remember now, let's talk about the war scenario because they were numbered. Listen to this and tell me if you're going to be in surprise mode. Just to get a clarity of what is considered adult and what is considered to be still a child. Numbers 1 verse 2 through 3 take a census of all the congregation of the children of israel by their family by their father's house according to the number of names and every male individually listen to this from 20 years old and above all who are able to go to war are you hearing this from 20 years old and above, all who are able to go to war in Israel, you and Aaron shall number them by their armies. Here's another confirmation of the age, what the father considers a person to be an adult by that time, 20 years. 
old is considered already an adult. Any person below that is a child. Numbers 1, 17 through 18. Then, or at least let's call them teens, right? Teens and then, you know, children. Numbers 1, 17 through 18. Then Moses and Aaron took these men who had been mentioned by name and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month and they recited their ancestry by families, by their father's house, houses, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and above, each one individually. This is Numbers 1, 17 through 18. Again, confirming from 20 years old and above. Now listen to this. During the first year of marriage, Yahweh commands that a man not be charged with going to war. This is the first year of marriage. It is commanded that a man not be charged with going to war. So if there is a war that breaks loose and that person just got married, they're not commanded to go to war, at least for the first year. Okay, Deuteronomy 24, verse 5, listen to what it says. When a man has taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war or be charged with any business. He shall be free at home one year, one year, and bring happiness to his wife whom he has taken. Isn't that beautiful that when a man has taken a new wife, you know, a man has taken taking a new wife, you know, it's expressing that, like, he's not going to be charged, you know, like, he shall not go out to war or be charged with any business. He shall be free at home one year and bring happiness to his wife, whom he has taken. It's beautiful. Listen to this, sisters. Now, when we think about that, right, as I was expressing 20 years and above how they were counting individually a family, they off the, off, already we can see how when someone was 20 years old, they were already separated in a sense. They were separated individually. They were no longer considered like, uh, you know, a little one. So once a male figure was 20, anyone was 20, they were already on that list that they had to number the person. And we see also how a man that takes a, a, a wife, how that person is basically the first year, they stay with their, with their wife for that first year. Remember when I read to you Numbers 1, 2, 3, where it says, take a censor of all the congregation of the children of Israel by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of the names every male individually from 20 years old and above all who have all who are able to go to war in Israel are you hearing this all who are able to go to war and who are the ones able to go to war everyone that is from 20 years old and above okay they are the ones that were commanded okay now if we were talking about now, when we read about Deuteronomy, about marriage, you know, a woman getting married and then the husband, if he was going to go to war, he's not, you know, he is free of, of uh, basically free of charge in a sense of, um, you know, he doesn't have to go to war for the first year, but to bring happiness to his wife who, who, whom he has just recently married, you know, for one whole year. We see that if we were talking about children here getting married, they wouldn't be allowed to go to war in the first place. And so I'm, I'm trying to clarify this because we see that in our generation, people are getting married at a very young age, way below 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, you know? And so we have to make sure that we are, we are understanding what is the truth here and not follow the ways and the patterns of the world. 
we must remove the things of the world. Remember, we must, we are called to be separated and we must learn the truth. So clearly something significant takes place, sisters. It takes place when we, as women, when, when, when our children are turning 20, something happens at that age. You see, that's the age that a person is no longer among the tap, is no, no longer considered a child, a little one, and they become a man or a woman. And so all this, oh, when they're 18, that's when they're an adult, that's not true. We see in the scripture that when a child is in the age of 20, that's when that child truly becomes a man or a woman. And so this is so important for all of us mother out there that have children that we understand this, especially when they are already in that point where they wanna get married and things like that, that you, we have a strong foundation of this so we can guide our children properly in the ways of our Father, in the ways of our Heavenly Father Yahweh. In Genesis 2, 24, it says this, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now, a man shall leave his parents and be joined to his wife, woman. Nowhere in Scripture do we find a taf, a little one, leaving his parents and getting married and Simply a little one is not considered anywhere in scripture to be considered a man or a woman during that time. Remember, Hebrew, the word taf means little ones. During that stage of that age, they're not considered a man and or a woman, okay? They're not leaving their parents and getting married at that time. There's, you don't see this in scripture, okay? In every case, a taf, meaning a little one, is distinguish from men and women. Here are, I'm gonna give you some examples. I'm gonna give you some examples. It's Deuteronomy chapter two, verse 34. We took all his cities at that time and we utterly destroyed the men, women, and little ones of every city. We left none remaining. Exodus 12, verse 37, it says, the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkot about 600,000 men on foot, besides children. In Deuteronomy 31, verse 12, it says, Gather the people together, men and women and little ones, and the stranger who is within your gates, that they may hear and they may learn to fear Yahweh, your mighty one, and carefully observe all the words of this law. Jeremiah 40, verse 7, and when all the captains of the armies who were in the fields, they and their men heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah, the son of Haikakim, forgive me, sisters, some of these names I can't pronounce correctly, governed in the land and had committed to him men, women, children, and the poorest of the land who had not been carried away captive to Babylon. Taf, meaning little ones, are considered to be a separated class of people under 20 years of age. Little ones is not actually an accurate translation. What it's mean would mean, you know, what it's meant would be teens and little children. Since Taf is used to describe the group of people under 20 years of age, so taf in Hebrew is considered little ones, but basically think of it in their way of saying taf. It's basically saying to you, I'm talking about every person that's not over 20. Everyone below, everyone that's a taf, they're children, that they're 19, 18, they're all teens and little children, okay? So instead of them just kind of splitting it in this category as we know it as teens, uh, toddlers, you know, in those categories, they simply just have a just plain and simple taff. So you understand that they're talking about teens and every, every other child below, you know, below that. 
Now, if you look at the secular history of, uh, of the Jewish and Christian people, both of them made a habit of marrying early teen girls. We see that. Many teen girls, and some of us that are watching this, listening to this, have been there, have gotten married at, in their teens, very early in their life. And this has been a habit. Even in our country, we still see this legally for an adult man to marry a 15 year old girl in some states, as long as there is the parental permission, you know, as long as the parent signs the form and releases them to that person, you know, of allowing them to, yeah, she can marry you, you know. However, you can't find an example in scripture where a teenager got married. We can't see that. Let's face it. It's not in scripture. You don't see anywhere where a teen girl is getting married with a man. You don't see that. In the New Testament, listen to this. That This is going to be another mind moment of like, wow. This is so good to understand this, you know, for many of us mothers, mothers out there with children that are in the state of wanting to be married and everything like that. And just also for you young lady that right now want to get married and you are in your teens, please listen carefully. In the New Testament, Paul indicates that someone must be a certain age to get married. Listen to what the clarification Paul was given. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 36, listen to what it says. But if any man thinks he is behaving improperly towards his virgin, a virgin, just in case you are young, a virgin is someone that has not been intimate with any man. Okay, so I'm going to repeat it. But if any man thinks he is behaving improperly towards his virgin, if she is part, if, if she is past the flower of youth, and thus it must be, let him do what he wishes. He does not sin, let them marry. Ooh, I'm going to clarify this, okay? I'm going to clarify this. Listen to this, sister. When it's talking about the flower, we're not talking about menstruation here. We're talking about her youth. We're talking about that moment where she is hitting puberty. She's going through that process. That is kind of describing when she is past that flower of youth. When now she has become sure you know she's no longer in that in that stage listen to this again if any man thinks he is behaving improperly towards his virgin if she is past the flower of youth and thus it must be basically saying it has to be like that she has to pass that flower that that pass the flower of youth let let him do what he wishes he does not sin let them married Notice that it says that she is past the flower of youth, and thus it must be. In other words, a female needs to be a certain age before getting married. And you saw how Paul was saying he does not sin, let them married. He is clarifying. Now, anyone that marries a child, someone in the Taf area, they're marrying, they're, they're sinning because they must wait for that person to be a mature adult past that you know in the proper age to get married listen to this i want to make sure that you guys understand that we are not talking about when it says flower of youth we're not talking about menstruation as how you know king james expresses um like for instance in leviticus chapter 15 24 listen when it talks about a flower in a different way and if any man lies with her at all and her flower be upon him he shall be unclean seven days right here in leviticus chapter 15 verse 24 right there is talking about menstruation if her menstruation is pretty much upon him if, if you know she has you know she's menstruating and her blood is now upon him this is talking about that but when we're talking about uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 36, but if any man thinks he is behaving improperly towards his virgin, 
towards his virgin if she is past the flower of youth you see past the flower of youth and thus it must be let him do what he wishes he does not sin let them marry so now sisters but would our heavenly father really approve of marrying very young girls even as young as 10 years old or less not so not so remember that us women you know young girls you know some of us end up getting our periods at a very young age a very very early age 10 11 12 years old very early in age okay now i want to continue here if we consider the growth of a child 20 years of age would make sense as a point to where a person is considered fully grown there is a certain level of mental maturity that must be reached Yahweh allows marriage between people 20 years and older. Yahweh has judged a person's mind to be significant, significantly developed to handle marriage and family. But we see that once they hit the age of 20, their mind is significantly developed to handle marriage and what? Family at that time. And how it indicates in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 36. But if any man thinks he is behaving improperly towards his virgin, if she is past the flower of youth, and thus it must be, let him do what he wishes. He does not sin. Let them marry. Notice that the text says, let them marry. Let them marry. Once that person is past 20, that's it, you know. Another scripture also points to a point past the onset of puberty listen to this 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 is a beautiful think of it like a um i will say like picture like a, something like kind of interpreting uh uh or revealing like a hidden meaning think of it like that something hidden like a hidden meaning mystery and how it describes a woman is just listen this is so beautiful and it just gives you a point of understanding what is describing when a woman is past her puberty state, you know, when she is already hitting puberty and she's developing and all this kind of thing. But how it's describing, you know, when a person is a child in a child state and when that person now becomes mature to the level of marriage. In Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 4 through 8, it says, As for your nativity, on the day you were born, your navel cord, meaning your umbilical cord, was not cut, nor were you washed in water to cleanse you. You were not rubbed with salt, nor wrapped with swaddle cloth. You know how when the baby is born, she has the baby, when the baby is born, they still have the umbilical. They're still with blood all over their body. Um, you know, and so it's describing literally a baby is literally describing a baby, you know, because it's describing the umbilical cord, it's describing the blood and everything like that. So I'm gonna read it again. I just wanted to give you that little bit of picture to help you uh, put it all together in your mind. As for your nativity, the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you washed in water to cleanse you. You were not rubbed with salt, nor wrapped with swaddle cloth, then it says, no, I pitied you to any of these things for you, to have compassion on you, but you were thrown out into the open field. When you, were, when you yourself were loaded on the day you were born. And when I passed, listen to this, when I passed by you and saw you struggling in your own blood, I said to you, in your blood live yes i said to you in your blood live i made you thrive like a plant in the field and you grew matured and became very beautiful your breasts were formed your hair grew but you were naked and bare 
when I pass by you again and looked upon you, indeed your time was the time of love. So I spread my wing over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore an oath to you and enter into a covenant with you and you became mine, says the master Yahweh. You see this. So this interpretation revealing a hidden meaning describing the nation of Israel like he would a young girl. Notice that Yahweh did not enter into covenant with her for marriage during the time that, that it says breasts were formed and hair grew. This will be in the middle to late teens, you know? When she, when, when it's describing already developing breasts, her hair was growing, this was already in her teens. This would be in the middle to late teens, depending on when puberty began. He did not marry her at that time, okay? He did not marry her at that time. He later passed by again and saw that her time for love. So once again, it appears that a time for entering into marriage is past the point of the only consistent biblical definition of childhood, the Hebrew word taf. Once a person is past the point of taf, meaning little, being a little child of taf, once a person is past that point of taf, they are fully accounted, accountable for themselves and thus are able to enter into marriage. Marriage covenant as a man or as a woman. So you see, when you read the story to yourself, sisters, in Ezekiel, chapter 16 verse 4 through 8 you see how beautiful that is and when you read it very carefully you will see what i am expressing how it expresses the point of puberty and after so by all appearances the full counsel of scripture points to 20 years of age as the minimum age for marriage some young people let's face it find it difficult to wait until 20 years of age to marry. But this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity though for you young ladies out there. And this is an opportunity to develop the discipline and self-control a person needs to, to needs to be faithful to their future spouse, okay? So take that moment, take that moment to in the opportunity to develop the discipline and that self-control, you know, that, that, that what needs to be faithful to their future husband, okay? It also, also a time for, for, you know, for young people to really learn about themselves, you know, and discover what kind of vision and purpose Yahweh has for their lives. Whoever they marry will be the kind of person that will complement their vision and their purpose now listen to this kind of like a warning moment, okay? Anyone, anyone allowing their hearts to lust for a person under the age of 20 years of age is biblically speaking, actually committing child sexual abuse in their hearts. You're hearing this, it's serious. A person under the age of 20 is just as off limits as a man lusting for another man or a man lusting for a beast or a man lusting for his own sister. Persons under the age of 20 are forbidden. This is extremely important in the body of Messiah that we understand this. What is considered a child? And when a person is ready to be married, the, the proper age. Anyone marrying someone under 20 years old is marrying a child, which is not supported in scripture. It's not supported in scripture. If 20 years of age were not the age, when would it be? 20 years of age has the most support of any other age of consent. 
Otherwise, one can just marry a menstrual 10-year-old girl. So, so we need to get back to scripture and reject the modern corruption, the modern corruption and perversion that 18 years of age is the age of adulthood. This has absolutely no support in scripture. In fact, before the 1970s, and you guys can search this up, before the year 1970s, no one was considered an adult until they were 21 years of age. Okay, so before the 1970s, sisters, no one was considered an adult until they were 21 years of age. Scripture, scripture says age 20. Thus it must be. So for Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 36, it says, But if any man thinks he is behaving improperly towards his virgin, if she is past the flower of youth, and thus it must be, let him do what he wishes. He does not sin. Let them marry. So sisters, I'm going to leave this important, valuable information here. And I hope that you continue to digest it, continue to, to, if you have to watch this video again, to listen to it again. Because sometimes when you watch, you listen to it a second time, you know, I'm understanding more. I hope that we have a clear understanding, sisters, and all of, all of us mothers out there, the proper age for our children to marry and teaching them the proper age of marriage is 20 and over. This is what is scripture. This is what is the correct way of truth, age 20, okay? Anyone under the age of 20 is still considered a child, okay? Is still considered a child. That's why in biblical times, we see that when someone went to war, it was 20 and over. When someone was counted in the number of the people, it was 20 and over. Anyone below that was considered a child. So I hope you were blessed as I was. And let's continue, sisters, to continue to grow and learn in our Heavenly Father. And let's sisters learn our position as the woman learning and understanding that we can teach each other we can teach each other women to women but we as women should not be teaching men and we as women should not be leading men that is their role that is their position we must learn to be silent we must learn to to know our place that we are called to be a helper a helper okay remember Adam was created first okay to lead Eve was created to be a helpmeet we must remember what we were created for once we start fulfilling our place our role you start to notice everything coming into place every piece is so important every piece is so important when everyone does what they were created to do okay shalom